Hi guys, Andrew here from Tutorial Soup. Um, in the last tutorial, I show you how to make a really cool shape uh, with uh, shadow blur. Um, this this is um, this creates nice, cool uh, pseudo lighting effects and uh, makes things look quite cool. Um, in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to create bezier curves and um, also how to import an image over to the canvas. Um, first of all I'm going to get rid of this, get rid of these, save. Now before I show you how to create a bezier curve I'm going to quickly show you, I'm just going to go over again how to create a line um, quickly. So to create a line we start off with context begin path. Um, move to. So this is the first coordinate um, at the start of the line. Great. Um, the next is the x y coordinates of the finish uh, finishing. The next is the x y coordinates of the end position. So if I put 200 on the x-axis and 100 on the y, um, then we close the path to signify the end, and then we stroke. So now, if we save that, that's a, this is going to be a simple line, um, straight horizontal line. Um, here, so that's how easy that is. I'm going to sh quickly now show you how to create Bezier curve, which is essentially a line with different control points. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. Again, we're going to start with begin path. Uh, always forget to do context, don't I? Begin the path, then move to. So we're gonna again, we're gonna put the start position, start x y position. So do 100, 100 again. Now, now we're gonna write, now we're gonna write quadratic curve. Now, this takes four arguments. Uh, the first, the first is the x y coordinates of the control point, which I'll explain in a minute. And the second two arguments are the next position of the path. So to start off with, I'm going to put this to fifty. X, y, x position of the control point to 50, x, y, sorry, the y position to 50, and the x position of the next path point, <laughs> and the, there we go. So if I refresh this now, nothing happens. Yeah, it's because I just need to. Stroke, stroke it. There you go. Um, so this here is the first. Uh, this is where we moved to, where we, where we're going to plot the first point, where we moved it to, um, and then the quadratic curve. The first two arguments is this section here and this is the control point here and uh, the last two arguments are the uh, coordinates of the end of the line so if I move the X position the horizontal position of the control point it goes uh, more to the center so if I put 150 you can see 
how I've made a pretty um, pretty good um, arc. So this is the first point of the line. This is the control point here. The x y coordinates of the control point have um, uh, given you this, which is 150, uh, 150 across. This is 150 across and 50 down. And then the last last position is 200 across and 100 down. So that's that's the quadratic curve. Now, now the next the next thing I'm going to show you is a Bezier curve. Technically, <clears throat> it's pretty much the same. Um, the only difference is it's got two control points. So if we get rid of this, now I'm going to leave this one the same. The only thing I'm going to change is this um, Bezier curve to now. The first two arguments are the same, it's going to be the position of the first control point, so up 150, right, 50. Uh, the next two arguments are going to be the position of the second control point, so I'm going to change this to 250 by 50, and then the next two arguments again is the end position of the line. So. Um, I'll put the end position as make it a little bit longer and 15. Let's see what this looks like. There we go. Um, I'll change this to 150. So Let's see if I can make this a little bit more clearer. There we go. So again, we've got the starting position, which is where we move to. Um, we then drew a line. Essentially, we're then drawing a line uh, 400 across and 100 down. Um, but in in there, we've got the two control points. So one uh, one is here, and the other one is here. So this is um, a good way of creating cool little shapes. You can actually you can actually combine um, curves to make some pretty complex shapes. Um, but it takes a little bit of time. Um, play around with this um, and then um, and you can see you can make some pretty cool shapes out of it. Um, it takes a little longer than drawing it by hand but you get some good results. Now now I'm going to quickly show you how easy it is to load an image into or onto the canvas. Um, this is going to be essential uh, for creating games and for importing um, backgrounds and character sprites and um, sprite sheets. Uh, so, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new variable called image. This is going to create a new image object. Um, then going to set the source oops, image dot source equals um, base dot png. I believe it is. Uh, oops. In the brackets, image dot load dot my spelling again, context dot draw image. One day I will learn how to spell. There we go, and that's how easy it is to import an image 
into the canvas. Uh, obviously you can change the coordinates so you can put them further across the page. And further down. And I mean we can ma manipulate that just as easily as we can ma manipulate any other uh, shape. Essentially the canvas is just one uh, big bitmap. Um, so accessing a picture is pretty much just as easy as accessing a shape. Um, right, yeah so play around with that and um, I will see you in the next tutorial.